Hi, this is Phil Greenwood in the series of Lean Finance tutorials on YouTube. Uh, one of the key things, questions we get many times from entrepreneurs and students is about burn rate and time to cliff. These are terms that are not commonly used in MBA programs or undergrad finance and accounting programs. So I wanted to just go through one quick derivation and explanation of it to give you a sense of what it means. Burn rate is simply taking your free cash flow during a length of time, whether it be a quarter, a month, a year, and dividing it by the number of days in that year or month or quarter to come up with how much money is either being spent or being generated uh, per day in this case. For instance, if you had free cash flow that you calculated how much cash was being burned, being that was being used or, or, or generated during a year, you divide it by 360 days in a year and have a burn rate per day for that yearly period. Now, what you can do with burn rate is this, is you can take the cash on hand that you have in the bank right now and divide it what you project your burn rate to be, the dollar amount per day. Um, once you've done that, uh, in the case of the, the example we'll use, starting off with the cash on hand divided by the burn per day, it'll give you a rough estimate of how long that cash is going to last in number of days. Let's use a quick example. This is an analytical instrument called Imago Scientific Midwest-based company. Uh, and let's focus on 2001. You can see they had a beginning cash, cash balance on J January 1 of 2001 of 38,000 bucks. And you can see at the bottom of 2001, they had just over $3.034 million uh, in cash on hand. In between, you can see the various uh, changes to cash flow, including equity investments and loans. So critical, what we want to do from this is calculate the free cash flow. We would take the, the change in the cash between ending and, and beginning and exclude any equity financing, in this case $5.5 million or $245,000 for the loans, to see what the cash being generated or being burned during the entire year was projected to be. So in Imago's case, when we make that adjustment, we note that the change in cash was $2.995 million. If we deduct that financing, $5.745 million, the equity and the loan, we realize that cash from operations before financing, we're going to lose $2.75 million. So for that year, we're projecting a cash burn of $2.75 million. Now we want to calculate the burn rate for that year. So take that $2.75 million and divide it by the number of days in a year. In this case, we'll use 360. Uh, some people use 365. Some might use 270. What's critical is you, know, you use the consistent days for whatever your calculation is. So taking that cash burn for the entire year, dividing it by 360 days, we're seeing that Imago is basically spending, in this example for 2001, $7,600, and this is rounded per day in excess of what it's, what it's bringing in. So the burn rate is 7,600 per day. Now if we went back to their balance sheet, we'd be able to see that on, on hand at the end of, 19, of 2001, they had $3.034 million in cash, we divide that by the burn rate of negative 7.6 per day, we'd roughly estimate 398 days left of cash on hand. Now, a couple things to note with this example. We're using the burn rate for 2001, um, what we had, and we're looking at the cash at the, at the end of 2001. So technically, we'd want to use the burn rate of 2002 going into the future from the end of 2001 to give us a more ideal sense of how long that cash is going to last. But at least now you see the mechanics. This is an important measure for both entrepreneurs and investors. Helps us determine financing strategy, how much longer uh, the company has until the TTC or time to cliff. It just gives us an overall sense of the financial shape of a startup.